Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Alexander Zolotov. I work for JetBrains company. And JetBrains is a company behind such IDEs like IntelliJ IDEA, PHP Storm, PyCharm, etc. An IDE abbreviation, if someone doesn't know, stands for Integrated Development Environment. Basically, it's just a professional tool for software, software developer. And I've been developing different IDEs based on IntelliJ platform, platform more than four years. And today I'm going to show you how, uh, show you some basic things on what language support implementation in IntelliJ platform looks like. And then I'll tell you uh, what benefits IDE can bring to Gophers. First of all, since all my examples are based on uh, IntelliJ Go plugin for IntelliJ IDEA, uh, let me tell you more about the plugin. Uh, IntelliJ Go plugin was initially created several years ago by Mihai Toda. Uh, since then, it's been developing, developed by the community. Uh, and at some point, my colleague Sergey and I thought that we can apply our experience in implementing languages supporting IDEs to this plugin, uh, and we can do it as our 20% project. So we started to contribute to the plugin, and the first nightly build of the plugin with completely rewritten internal things was published in the first quarter of 2015, and the first public release was issued in October 2015, and the reason I, I'm telling this is that if you used the plugin before that date, you should probably check it out one more time as, it, as it's changed dramatically. Now the plugin is called IntelliJ Go, it's still open sourced, it's still under development. Uh, the development is not so active as we wanted it to be, uh, but we still, add, uh, we, st we still add features regularly. Um, and the plugin can be part of any IntelliJ based IDs, including free ones like IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, PyCharm Community Edition, and Android Studio. Recently, we also have started publishing a detailed change log at httpgo-id.com. There are a lot of fancy GIFs, or GIFs, I don't know. You may want to take a look at it to find out what new features new releases bring. And a little disclaimer for those who use IntelliJ Go. Some of the examples that I'm demonstrating today are marked as experimental. Uh, and it means that they are too raw to be published uh, even in the nightly channel. However, since I am showing them, they are coming soon. So let's start with a quick overview of uh, an average plugin for IntelliJ platform. Almost all language plugins uh, implement Lexer and Parse, do some inspections and refactorings, introduce uh, references and in indices. Let's see what all these are and what kind of features you get when implementing each part. Usually development starts with uh, Lexer, which is just a converter of, converter of plain text to the stream of tokens. And this actually the thing that can tell the IDE that, uh, for example, func main parenthesis braces text is actually set of following tokens. It's func keyword, white space, identifier, parenthesis, etc. Uh, lexers are usually are generated by JFlex tool, and the source file of lexer looks like this. It's just a set of regular expressions and corresponding token names. So despite the fact that this entity is really primitive, uh, IntelliJ Platform can provide simple syntax highlighting based on this. 
some highlighting, uh, matching braces, some path filtering, and other features. Uh, path fil filtering means that since your Lexa defines string literals and comments, uh, the user can actually ask IDE to search particular words only in comments or only in <laughs> string literals. So the next thing you usually want to implement is a parser. Most of the parsers in IntelliJ IDE are implemented manually. However, recently we've got a special tool named Grammar Kit. Uh, the Grammar Kit tool generates the parser code and some IntelliJ specif specific uh, parser infrastructure from uh, BNF form. Uh, this is what the part of Go parser looks like. Uh, here you see part of syntax definitions of Go language in BNF form and plus some special information for generating an object model. The result of the parser in IntelliJ is an abstract tree and an object-oriented model for this tree. Uh, basically, syntax tree is the same that Go AST package produces and the object-oriented model is called Program Structure Interface in IntelliJ. PSI for short, it allows you to work with program elements in an object-oriented way. So for example, uh, you can see function declaration uh, definition here, and if you want to get a, a name identifier, uh, you don't have to traverse through all children of function declaration in abstract syntax tree, you just uh, you know, get a function declaration object and just ask uh, to get, get me an identifier in object-oriented way. So in BNF file, it's also possible to declare custom methods as well. For example, take a look at method declaration rule. Uh, there is a get receiver type custom method, and it means that you can just invoke get receiver type method on method declaration and get the receiver type, despite the fact that receiver type is not directly children of uh, method declaration in abstract syntax tree. Also, it's possible to define recovery rules in this file. Uh, in this particular example, it means that if something has gone wrong while parsing statements, uh, parser can use statement recover rule to find a place where it's safe to continue parsing. The PSI model helps you to tell IDE not only about syntax structure, but also about some semantics, about some particular code. And with the help of PSI model, you can easily implement many smart actions like wrapping code, moving statements, some basic actions for balance, for, for balance braces uh, or adding missing semicolons and so on. Also, you can uh, easily implement various inspections and refactorings. Uh, speaking of inspections, the LG platform has a great inspection engine. For example, in this is what the simple inspection looks like. So you just say that you want to check all range clauses, uh, get the range expression, and if the range expression exists and its type is not editable, not to report an error. IDE runs your inspection on every change on the minimal affected scope, re-examines uh, nodes of uh, PSI tree, and shows the reported errors in editor, which is shown on image below. Other very important thing are references, and this is the last thing I want to tell you about IntelliJ platform today. Uh, a reference is, is a basic link between element usage and elements declaration. In this example, blue bar function declaration is a declaration, and green bars are calls, call expression with reference to declaration, to blue declaration. And in IntelliJ, any ele element can be linked to any other element, and references might be cross-language, so no restrictions here. Plugins developers should tell ID what element have a reference and what element should be considered as a declaration for a particular reference. And apparently, based on this information, IntelliJ can provide navigation. And apart from the, that, um, after reference, references are implemented, you get find usages feature, some basic completion, uh, rename refactoring, and other features without uh, a single line of code. 
In IntelliJ Go plugin, we have all these bases, the Alexa, pass um, many different indices, the type inference system, and so on. So the hardest part is almost done, and IDE knows many things about the semantics of code in Go. Uh, so now we are just going to teach IDE more tricks based on this information by using features that IntelliJ platform provides. It's like build new refactorings, add new intention actions, add new inspections, etc. And if you want to participate, welcome to our GitHub repository and just read contribution instructions there or contact me and I'll help you with the contribution. So let's talk about benefits IDE can provide. Usually, I tell users that an IDE is better because it manipulates with program elements, so it's elements of abstract syntax tree and not with text. It's far simpler to build smart and reliable actions using an AST. It's really easy to analyze code manipulating with language-specific elements like if statements, for statements, some different expressions, and field declarations. And a good idea indeed manipulates program elements even during the easiest action. For example, moving statements, wrapping statements, unwrapping statements, and so on. In all these cases, IDE doesn't let you to doesn't let you invoke these actions in inappropriate places and broke the code. It always tries to keep syntax tree in a valid state. And all of this true. However, as you know, the classic way of Go development is to use editors along with command line tools like Go imports, Guru, GoDev, Go code, etc. And most of them are AST backed too. So they actively use uh, Go AST package and perform pro program elements manipulation just like any IDE does. And all these Tools are amazing, and IntelliJ IDEs even have a real built-in terminal to enable the user to use these tools. So feel free to use it. So this is not the benefit I am going to talk about today. Anyway, IDEA, and particular, particularly IDEA, but any IDE can provide much more pleasant experience. The first cool thing I want to tell you today is that a good IDE usually can't deal with a broken code. You should remember then that uh, an editor, including an editor inside IDE, is made for editing, right? And while you're editing, you have a broken code. When you add in something new, most of the time you have broken code, you, there are no closing braces, some types are wrong, uh, vari variables are unused, imports are unused, uh, return statements are missing, and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, while editing, you're often in need of seeing, uh, for example, documentation of just used function, or its definition, or to look through its usages, at, Etc. And IDE usually enables you to do all of this. In this, on this video, you can see incomplete if statement with missing braces, and despite this fact, you still can see definition of my function or its documentation. Uh, and this peculiarity, actually, the the big the this is the thing that makes the biggest difference between a compiler parser and IDE parsers. Compiler parsers see an error and report about it, and that's all they do. So they don't parse the rest of the, your code because, you know, code is not compilable, so why do they do this? And on the other hand, IDE parsers can usually understand that something has gone wrong they can locate a place where something has gone wrong. And the most important thing is that they can locate another place where it's safe to continue parsing. So remember th those uh, recovery rules, that's about them. And this peculiarity enables you to do almost anything you want with an incomplete code in IDE. Another example uh, of using this is not imported package. Imagine the situation uh, that you've typed 
a package name, but you completely forgot function name you wanted to use. Usually you cannot discover through the function of not imported package, and in the same time you cannot invoke Go imports on broken code. So you've got to either make the file compilable or to import the package manually. Different editors uh, have different solutions for, for this case, uh, but anyway, you've got to think about importing or about making file compilable instead of just looking through the list of all the functions available. And IDE, particularly IntelliJ IDE with Go plugin, allows you to do it. And this is actually the case, the, the point. Uh, a good IDE does routine work for you and it removes all possible distractions and lets you to concentrate on a task on hand, at hand. Uh, you don't need to think much about imports. You don't need to care about an incomplete code before, um, before running some smart action on before running some linter. Everything your editor can do without interacting with you, it just should do. Let's see at Guru, for example. Guru is a wonderful, to wonderful tool that provides a lot of useful information for editors. If you haven't heard about it, you definitely sh should get, get to know Guru as it's very useful. So for example, Guru uh, has a Guru free bars action. And this is uh, the action which shows you free variables in the piece of code. In most cases, these variables are declared before the selection and referenced inside the selection. As it said in Guru documentation, this action can be used to, for performing extract method refactoring. So you should run Guru freeverse action, then copy a list of free variables, then use that list as an argument list of new functions, then copy-paste the selection and use it as a body of function, then replace selection as a call expression, and so on. And this is actually works in any editor. So this is how manual uh, extract message refactoring looks like. Since we cannot use Guru, uh, because it requires compilable code, we had to implement our own freeverse action and we implemented it. And then we saw that at this point, an editor has a function arguments, uh, it has return values, it has types of return values, it has place to insert function invocation. So uh, why, don't, why not to have to routine work done for the user in this case? because all of these are enough to perform this naive extract method refactoring. On this video, you see that input is a free variable and it's passed as a parameter to the new function and external one and external two uh, variables are modified inside selection and referenced outside selection, so they are converted to return values of the new function. So let's see it one more time because it's not the easiest action in the presentation. So an IDE does things automatically for you, if it knows what to do. And if it's unsure about something, it's better it asks user for cl clarification. And I'm sure this interaction, which is my next point, must be user friendly. For example, look at this code. In Go 1.6, 1, 1. it's not clear what package should be imported. Imported. Must rent or crypto rent. So a tool can do nothing or it can import random package. And a good IDE must at least ask the user about what he or she really wants. It's better if the interaction happens just uh, where it's needed. For example, an import suggestion on this video is shown exactly where a package is referenced. And interaction is not only about asking user, but it's also about showing some information. For example, it's much nicer to see the results of linters just inside an editor. And what is more, it's great to see how the results change while you're changing the code. 
It doesn't mean that if you use IDE, you shouldn't use Lintus. Of course, you should use Lintus. But, you know, it's just better sometimes to see some errors immediately. It's even better, as I mentioned before, if an IDE can do a routine task for you and fix some errors it found. For example, on this video, you can see how IDE suggests you to replace a known variable assignment with variable declaration statement or to create a new variable. Or it's great to see variable values just nearby variable declaration during debugging. It's just convenient. So you see value variable declaration statement and you can see its value, current value during the debugging and how it changes. Or it's great to look at the list of implemented interfaces staying just right on the particular structure. On this video you can see what interfaces implemented by my reader structure and my writer structure. Or vice versa, uh, to look at the list of the structures which implement the interface you are staying on. As soon as all these features are implemented on the same engine uh, and the elements of the list is just the Go structures, it's possible to see the definitions, the declarations, documentations, filter them by name, navigate to them, etc. In short, you can do anything you want, anything you can do, um, just staying on any regular Go, Go structure. So it was all about interaction. And the next point is, that since Go is quite a young language, I believe that it's not the first language you know. And I think for most of you, it's not the only language you use either. So another benefit of using IDE in this case is to get a unified experience across different languages. What I mean is, when you want to implement something in JavaScript, you do not need to Google something similar to Go rename but for JavaScript or something similar to Guru but for PHP. You just, uh, in, a, in IDE, you just uh, use the same shortcut for renaming in any language and it just works. In some cases, you can, can even mix languages. The common case is to use SQL inside the string literals of other language. Uh, here is an example how you can tell IDE that some particular string contains SQL and after that you immediately get syntax highlighting, completion, code validation for SQL inside this particular literal. And sometimes IDE is smart enough to suggest the language inside a particular literal. For example, it's known that the first parameter of must compile function of standard regex uh, package is a regular expression, so IDE injects regex language inside this literal automatically and you get highlighting, completion, inspections and some regex specific actions uh, just automatically. Besides the unification on working with different languages, IDE usually has a lot of features which have been introduced for years. For example, IntelliJ IDE has been developing for 16 years and it has a huge number of integrations here and there, for example, on, uh, databases support, uh, virtual control system integrations, local history, etc. And by the way, speaking of using command line tools, it's worth paying attention to the local history feature. Apparently, an IDE watches uh, all changes in files, all changes performed within the IDE, so you can easily revert any action. For example, rename action can be undone with a single click for all affected files. And editors provide similar experience for tools they have special integration with. But what if you want to use some unpopular tool uh, which has no any special support in the editor? As far as I know, it might be a problem. Uh, 
Nevertheless, in LGI IDEA, and I believe some other editors as well, watches the external changes in the same manner as internal changes and provides an ability to undo any external change made by command line tool externally. On this video, you can see how I invoked go rename action just in, in simple terminal and I am able to un undo and redo this action from the IDE. Moreover, IntelliJ IDEA stores all states of files between any external and internal changes and enables you to see the differences between these states and to revert files to any state using the local history feature. Here is, you can see a list of all states for today of main.go file. So that's it on Go IDE benefits part. This is what gophers are sure to benefit from. It's dealing with incomplete codes, doing routine work for them, convenient interaction, unified cross-language experience, and tons of uh, features of particular IDE. Uh, the main points are uh, that no matter how simple syntax of programming language is, an IDE might be a great help. And no matter how amazing command line tools for the language are, they have some restrictions on code they run against and some restrictions on interaction with, interacting with users. And for those who use IntelliJ Go plugin, here is some plan we have. Uh, these are the features we are going to work on in the nearest future. It's first of all templates. IntelliJ has a wonderful uh, support for HTML language and it would be nice to have special support for Go template specific stuff there. Uh, in the second, we are going to introduce more refactorings, more intention actions, and we are going to uh, support debugging for tests in IDEA. So that's all about Go ID today. Thank you for attention.